describe a little bit about like your campus and what kind of resources and what are the things that that your community offers kids that may not be available in other more traditional schools? That's describing the campus. It's messy. <laughs> it's, it's really messy. No, it's they, they clean it up occasionally. We do right. try and clean it up, but no, we we like mess. We like creative mess, and no, not no, not regular mess, but creative mess. So there's a lot of. If you walked around school, you'd see a lot of kid made do not touch signs. They put a mm. little hand with a because that's still in progress. That yeah, block building yeah. is still in progress. That big pile of junk that is actually a beautiful sculpture is still in progress. Progress. So our building, as I said, is like a really large, very large house with mm. all of the classrooms connected. We've got a sort of library learning support space connected as well and very large outdoor area with fruit trees and forest and mm. farmy where we can climb the trees and play. We've got sand pits. Everything is available to the kids. So the kitchen, the, all the resources, art room, everything is available to them. Mm -hmm. And so we do have the responsibility of learning how to put things away afterwards and to make sure it's not, um, it's interesting at Humanitas, which is very similar, but in a completely different setting. There's mm. so much, every, like almost every week, there's a, an issue on the agenda for meeting about washing your dishes. Yep. And it's like living in a big share house with like 60 yep. teenagers and everyone's like, I'm sure it's, I'm always washing the dishes, but somebody else doesn't wash the dishes. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of resources available and there's a lot of responsibility managing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got, we don't own our land. We, we lease mm. our land from the Department of Natural Resources. So that's a mm. kind of government body. And that arrangement doesn't really exist anymore, but did when the school was started. So mm. 40 years ago, we could do that. We could lease a little bit of land. What it meant that was when we were started, we had our little patch, like our sort of building mm. and forest everywhere and just bushland everywhere and then over time those blocks have all been sold off and so it's quite urban around the oh, space wow. and we're just like a little patch of bush within quite a lot of urban environment hmm. so that's that sort of changed too sometimes you get lovely neighbors and sometimes you get neighbors who are just like oh I'm trying to sleep and these kids keep <laughs> I, had, I had one one time, my, yeah, my, the principal had this funny day where she had a neighbour call up going, some kids, there's just some dogs loose at your school. I just hear wolf howling all the time. I'm trying to sleep. And I'm, she's like, well, they're just being a pack of wolves. It's just a wolf game. Um, so we, we had kids who were wolves for many hours of the day. She had to be like, guys, you need to be like quiet wolves because the neighbours are trying to sleep. Um, so, so we have, yeah, we have mostly a good relationship with them, but it has mm -hmm. changed without having as much free range and also mm. having more children obviously we love more space but sometimes you learn from being together um, right. when we've recently found we've had teachers who've worked in this space the teachers here are like oh wouldn't it be great if like we had more space and we were more spread out and we didn't just have all in together like all the classrooms in and people running through sometimes and we're like hey we're trying to read a story go around and mm. but then we had a teacher who'd been here a long time who moved to a different democratic school visited a different democratic school in a different state and she reflected on how nice that school was lovely but how different it was to our culture where because everything's connected because the classrooms mm. all physically touch and have doorways in and out of each other there is flow there is kids mm. who'll be like playing a board game in a different room with some different kids or mm doing some artwork or cartooning with in, and so you'll call your group together for your group times and people will come from all all spaces but there is a really mm. nice sense of connectedness so even though we're like oh wouldn't it be nice to have more space it is really <laughs> nice to be connected as well right, um, what right. was the other question so that was like about the physical campus it's yeah it's great and then what are some of the special resources that maybe may not be available to in a regular kind of school um well I would say we have similar resources to a regular yeah. school, like in terms of technology, computers mm -hmm. and 3D printers. And obviously state schools in, in Australia are pretty well funded, so they can mm. have a lot of resources, but lots of their resources may not be available all mm. the time. You go to lots of schools and you're like, oh, my goodness, look at this science lab or look at this amazing right. woodworking workshop. And you're like, yeah, but 
do the kids actually get to use them very often or is it just <laughs> a small group sometimes on special occasions where whereas our kids will use their tools or work with Don who's our amazing maker space person in this space to be fixing bikes or fixing lawnmowers so mm. that that kind of thing we I would say we have a similar level of resources but what we have is more available to people <laughs> This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.